My dudes, what's going on? We've got an important topic today, talking about the legendary crystal spawns. Anyways, let's get into it. To start off, what is a crystal mob spawn? Crystal mobs are a rare enemy that have a base value of spawning of 1 in 2,000 whenever you kill an enemy in the respective world. For instance, crystal carrots spawn in world 1, Crystal Cabal spawn in World 2, Crystal Cattle World 3, etc, etc. They are a way more juiced out version with 15 times more HP, 2.5 times higher accuracy in order to hit 100%, 2.5 times more damage than the enemy you are currently farming. So if you spawned a Crystal Cabal at Mimic's map, a Mimic does 45 damage, needs 120 accuracy for 100%, and has 4000 health. So that means the Crystal Cabal would do 112.5 damage, need 300 accuracy for 100%, and would have 60,000 HP. So in summary, the harder the map, the more juiced out the crystal mob will be. But here's the trade-off. Crystal mobs reward 30 times more XP and give you way more money. Not only that, they use every rare drop table in that world. From stamps, obols, to statues, and even gold foods, making it much easier to farm. For an example, in World 5, golden hamters for sailing, and golden nomwages for that juicy all-stat percent. So crystal farming becomes incredibly important later into the game. Now we know what a crystal mob is, Let's tell you how to increase those odds. The stamp at Gigafrogs that can be farmed from the Papaya Pig quest drops the crystalline stamp, but only if the quest is active. The stamp increased crystal spawn percent. At Frog's map in World 1, the quest line for the Picnic Basket, aka Picnic Stowaway, will reward you with a star talent book called Crystals for Days and has a max level of level 100, which also rewards crystal spawn percent. This one is very important, so make sure you get it. The card Poop and Dima Genie also rewards you with crystal spawn percent. From the post office, the non-predatory loot box will also give you crystal spawn percent. Shrine from World 3 Construction, aka the Crescent Shrine, is a massive boost to your crystal spawn chance and always being able to level up more. Not to mention the Chaotic Shizor card, which increases your shrine effects, will help this boost even more. Not only can you increase the odds, but you can also guarantee crystals per day. The achievement, the Platurist, can give you four daily crystals. The Merit Shop upgrade from World 4 will also give you plus three crystals. In alchemy, the sigil known as Shiny Beacon will give you extra daily crystal spawns, and depending on if you have chilled yarn from World 5 artifacts and sailing, and if the sigil is golden or not, you can get an extra seven from this with its max bonuses. The prayer glitter bug, which a few people have, and I wouldn't necessarily worry about it, but I'll mention it anyways, will spawn two extra crystals whenever you kill a giant, at the cost of lowered giant chance. And no, giant crystal mob spawns do not exist. Do not be fooled. And Kilroy in World 2 has a skull purchase for crystal spots, but I do not suggest spending your skulls on this. Finally, we have one of the most overpowered and sought after upgrades in the game that even makes crystal farming reliable is the chocolatey chip that comes from World 4 Lab. And what it does is it has a 75% chance to spawn another crystal after killing another crystal. So what ends up happening, if you're lucky, after you kill a crystal mob, it spawns another one, then spawns another one. It just creates a train of insane dopamine inducing crystal massacre. So you want to make sure to grab this chip. It is 100% a must have. Also, the chip that doubles the top left card and doubles the bottom right card can be used with Dima Genie and Poop to increase that spawn chance even more. So for instance, the baseline cards together at rank five, which is a Ruby card, will give you 150%. Use the two doublers on them, that will give you a whopping 300% spawn chance. In early game, crystal farming will mostly be done from your maestro because in the journeyman talent tree, there is a thing called come on out crystal talent, which will increase your crystal spawn chance. To this day, maestro has the highest crystal spawn in the game, thanks to this talent. A good starting farming spot for Maestro farming in the early game is the Sandcastles map. That map has high mob density and not a lot of platforms. Perfect for the Maestro. It's a very good farm for silver pens for your post office and silver obols of double sixes, which is one of our best in slot drop rate obols at gold rarity. Crystal farming is required if you want your characters to skyrocket in levels. We're talking level 400 to 500 due to the 30 times extra XP. So running grind time, crystal spawn chance, and XP percent cards will make this easy peasy. But in later game, that's when it starts getting crazy. Once you've accumulated enough crystal spawn chance, this is where the Omega gains comes in. For money farming, which I'll explain in a later video, comes from the Bubonic Conjurer with high crystal spawn chance. And if you can one-shot them, you can farm insane amounts of money due to the sheer amount of crystals you will spawn and because of the massive kill count Bubo can accumulate in a short amount of time from Raised Dead and Tentacle Eye Talents. Some examples for money farming maps with Bubo and with high crystal spawn chance are Tremor Worms, OJ Bay, and also in World 4, 
flambeige map, or even soda cans. Also good if you need to farm out some statues in World 5 and World 4, as well as getting some sweet, sweet cranium cooking procs. But if you're not farming money and you need some golden knowledges for that juicy golden effect percent stamp, this is where your Divine Knight will come in clutch. With the orb and the Divine Intervention talent and in a decent amount of drop rate, you can farm the Board Beans map in World 1. Will not only give you an insane amount of golden knowledges, but also some of the best statues in the game. And on top of that, more silver pens. Rule of thumb for Divine Knight Crystal Farming, you want as few platforms as possible, so flat maps are best. Although some of the same statues drop in different zones, I'm naming the best boss for the Divine Knight statue farming, in my personal opinion. Board beans or Giga Frogs in World 1 for movement speed, boot effect percent, crit chance, mining power, chopping power, health, and base damage. Sandcastles or Snellbees in World 2 for anvil speed, XP, alchemy speed, catching power, and defense, day to day rams or blood bones in world 3 for skill XP, donuts or clammies in world 4 for money percent, cooking XP, and breeding XP, and citrons and multis in world 5 for damage percent, sailing speed, and divinity XP. There you go, my dudes, a crystal mob spawn guide. Hope you enjoy getting a truckload's worth of dopamine and spawning all that glorious loot. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment to help the algorithm out and join the Discord. Also, if you haven't, check out the second channel. We got VODs, clips, and IE reviews to help you on your Eidolon journey. We want to end up hitting 1k subs, so itty bitty army, go over there and support. But anyways, my dudes, I gotta get back to the guide grind. Stay tuned for the next Eidolon video. Stay safe, happy grinding, and peace out.